Alrighty, welcome to the top eight of the 64 player draft. Got there on a sweet doomsday deck and uh, well, looks like we might be combo again. I think Wheel of Fortune is really good. It's not better than Time Twister. There are some differences where, like if you have Currency Converter wheels better, if your Reanimator wheel can typically be better, if your Brain Freeze and Limb wheel is better. For almost everything else though, Time Twister, it's a better color. Pitches look forces and all that. And reshuffling is generally a good thing to have. I love having a time twister effect, knowing I can just go through my whole deck again if I need to. But in any case, I'm going to take the wheel. The We'll let, 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 let Jesus take the wheel, right? Uh, I'm going to take wheel over spell pierce, which is the second best card. Iteration and Tundra, maybe third, but, yeah, you know. All right, what do we got? Well, we have a Scalding Tarn. I like Scalding Tarn more than Grim Monolith here. I think Grim Monolith is good. I would definitely take Mana Vault over uh, Scalding Tarn here if that was to be offered, but I think I would rather just take Scalding Tarn. I started with Wheel. I'm probably going to want to be blue-red, so having the best fetch in my in my corner seems like a pretty good idea. And, oh, there's a Mana Leak. I love Mana Leak. The two Mana Counters are all really good. It just lets you stop anything early, but also it lets you uh, kind of... It's just such a versatile answer. It can stop their threats. It can stop their counters. It can protect your own stuff. And it's just mana efficient. Mana leak is almost always going to counter something that's equal or greater in cost. Caracas is good too, but after this start, it's not, not very close. You're just going to take the mana leak. Now this is close because Blood Crypt is pretty nice with Scalding Tarn. We're straight up Grixis. But Time Warp has been a pretty strong card. I like Time Warp in Wheel of Fortune type decks. I don't think Fairy Mastermind or Brazen Borrower are in the running here. Or plateau really because red black is going to be a lot more common of a pairing but i think i'm actually going to take the time warp I, I like time warp but it's a little expensive you know but i don't have a black card yet and i feel like it's early in the draft and i have a scalding tarn so my man is on track to be decent time warp can be really good sometimes all right this is the first pick i'm unhappy about i think i might just take teferi hero of dominaria now kind of wish i took that plateau but uh Plateau my wheel. Here's another plateau. Like actually a worse plateau for me. Teferi's good. It's good with Time Warp. Again, it's not the ideal scenario here, but I'm not really close to taking Questing Beast. <sighs> Glorybringer is okay, but Mana Leak Teferi is a pretty nice combo. Time Warp's good with both of them, so that's not really that big of an issue. Seal of Removal is just kind of mid. I think I'll take Teferi here, but that is close. If you want to take Glorybringer there, I don't think it would be a crazy pick to make at all. Ooh, all right, this isn't bad. So there's two good cards here, and they're both blue. Shocker. I think I'm going to go Brainstorm. I like it with fetch lands. It's actually pretty good with wheel. Like, you go end of turn two, you Brainstorm, put your best card second, draw, wheel, and then draw into the, the one card you wanted to save. I also don't like days in, like, combo decks very much or decks with five drops. I'd rather have it days in a more proactive deck. Ooh, I do like Cryptic, though. We're shaping up nicely to be a cryptic deck. We could also just be a control deck. I mean, wheels potentially playable even in control. And I think cryptic's much better than Karn, Dark Depths, Zerda, any of those things. So I'm going to take that. Um, but if you ditch the wheel, the rest of these control cards are good. I'll probably take Wasteland here, though. It's not the best Wasteland deck in the world. <clears throat> just Wasteland uh, in a control deck is just okay. <clears throat> it is a good card, but on the other hand, Dig Through Time's actually looking kind of nice here. It's nice with Wheel of Fortune, fills your graveyard, Time Warp, Teferi. Also, my mana is going to be pretty blue intensive. I don't really want Wasteland. Yeah, I'm taking Dig over Delayed Blast, Fireball, and Snap. Now there's a white, black, green Trium that doesn't go with Scalding Tarn at all. I think I might just take Bray as Apprentice. I haven't played this one too much, but at 3 mana 2-3 that makes a 1-1 one -one with some abilities, that, that seems reasonable. Oh, that's a nice late Malcolm. I'll take that. We have a little bit of a discard theme going here with Wheel and Malcolm. So, unlike every other time I see Currency Converter, I would really like to see Currency Converter now. Maybe I'll wheel that plateau. That would be pretty nice. Though that pack didn't quite seem strong enough to do that. Huh, this is kind of interesting. Now I, I could take Rada's Firebrand and kind of wish I took Days, be Red Green Beats. There's also Gush, but I think Gush is really bad outside of like a Doomsday deck or a Fast Bond deck. I actually think if I take Firebrand here, I have kind of like a late start to a bit of a beatdown theme. I mean, I don't have to go that direction, but because these picks are kind of free, 
don't really like Valakut Exploration all that much. Maybe I'll just take Earthshaker Kenra, though. Anduril can be good now. I'll take the Kenra. Oh, Seal of Removal basically for free, I think is better than Escape. Escape's a color I don't have, and if I'm splashing an off-color, I'd rather just be Teferi. I mean, Magic Online always moves the thing around you're trying to take. All right, well, <laughs> we'll put Voldar and Epicure there for now. I don't think I'm going to end up red-blue beats, but I guess you never know. So this pack has... Fracture Identity, which used to be great and no longer is. It's good still, but I, I'm not considering taking it here. It's basically either Polluted Delta or Ponder for me. I don't really want to commit so much to Pyromancer because I, I have all these red cards over here, but they're, they're kind of fake in the sense that I I don't really want to play Voldar and Epicure or Earthshaker Kenra all that much. Firebrand's okay. Braze Apprentice is actually fine. I kind of just want to take Polluted Delta here. I think just taking the fetch here is going to be better. Oh, Mana Crypt? I'll take Mana Crypt. I, I was looking at the counter spell and kind of happy, but Mana Crypt is great. Kind of makes me wish I uh, <laughs> did take Fracture Identity, but it's okay. We'll take Mana Crypt. Maybe Wheel K Command or like Othari. Some pe people people tend not to take Othari. I found out with the new cards, like this happened when Minsk and Boo was added to the cube. A lot of people who don't know what these cards do or how good they are who just wouldn't take them, and you would do stuff like wheel. Like I, we saw Othari wheel in the draft yesterday, the, the draft playing for top eight, and today, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened again. Um, what am I going to do here? Because Monastery Mentor is kind of nice, but I don't really have the the fixing to necessarily be white, and I have a Teferi, and that's it. Bone Crusher is pretty good, but Xander's Lounge is actually looking nice. It makes Delta red and Tarn black. That's a pretty nice little thing. Having one blue red land is pretty good. I, I basically think Mentor, Virtue, Bone Crusher, they're all about the same tier. and Maybe none of them wheel, and that's fine too. All right, now we got to make the decision because on the one hand, there's Fire Covenant, which this deck could easily splash and is awesome. There's Sacred Foundry, which I guess doesn't work with Delta, just Tarn, and just fixes to Fairy. There's Inti. Inti is a really good card, and I talked about having a discard theme. This actually works well with other forms of discard. Basically, do I want to take Inti or Fire Covenant? Let's say if I was going to attack, I'd be pretty happy with Firebrand, Malcolm, and Brea's Apprentice. Also, Inti, Mana Crypt makes me want to be a little more assertive. There's also Scrubland, which is kind of interesting. That's a white source that only gets caught off Delta, so yeah, whatever, about the same. Whatever, I'm going to take Inti here, and... Why is there a fast bond? What is this fifth pick? I love fast bond and I have wheel of fortune. Actually, I'm probably going to take it. It's kind of a shame. I, I wish I had taken a different card. Like if I knew this was happening, I would probably have taken uh, <clears throat> sacred foundry or something, or I guess scrubland because it doesn't do pain, but we're here now. And the main thing that's driving me to take fast bond is what would I take if not that? A Thought Scour? That card's just super replaceable. Fastbond can be one of the best cards in your deck. So I'm just going to take that and kind of see what happens. Oh, there's a Taiga. Taiga works with Tarn. There's an Oliphant as well. I really do like Oliphant. There's also, if I take Taiga, I might wheel this Neshoba. I could be like five color aggro. Don't think I want to take Parallax Wave or Samwise or Fatal Push here. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually okay taking Taiga here. And if I can pick up a little bit more draw seven action, then I would be pretty happy too. Firebolt is pretty solid. Don't really like Tamiyo. I guess it's kind of good with Time Warp. That's so expensive though. Oracle of Moldiah is a card that's okay with Fast Bomb, but honestly, I'm really not that impressed with Oracle anymore. Shark Typhoon is just okay. All these cards are pretty close to each other. I think I'd rather just have Firebolt here. Oh, and then I got a Lightning Bolt. Okay, yeah. All right, well, Fast Bomb... Aside, I, I actually do think I'm still going to be red green or red red blue kind of aggro here. I mean, if we take this to ferry out, we're basically red blue splashing fast bond, which goes nicely with wheel. The dig through time actually could be kind of sick in this deck. All this discard. All right. I mean, if fast bond was in a pack with like a chain lightning, I would have just taken chain lightning at that point. Um, but it was in a pack with not a whole lot else, and then I gave up an Oliphant for this Taiga. Yeah, Oliphant is good, but it's not the end of the world to, to give it up. So let's see. Oh, Season Pyro Wield. All right, yeah, we're, we're in, we're in. 
All right, Season Pyro. I mean, I'm actually really glad I took this Inti. I have so many ways to discard. And so what, what that does is whenever you discard a card, you don't get the plus one, plus one trample. That, that only comes on you whenever you attack and choose to discard. But whenever you discard a card, you exile the top card of your library and you can play it to your next end step. So like discarding during their turn, which I guess actually none of these cards do, but discarding during their turn, let's give you till your turn to play it. But even then, if you like attack with Inti, discard a card, hit with Malcolm, draw and discard, and then you just have multiple cards exiled and you can like play one of them or, or all of them. Seems pretty good. And if my mana works out to play Fast Bond, I mean, I would play it in this deck with Wheel of Fortune, Season Pyromancer, Malcolm and Inti. I'm, I'm actually seeing kind of a lot of cards and Fast Bond works nicely there. So this is a pretty solid start. Could use like another couple counters. Like, oh, well, if I get like two more, I'll be thrilled. You usually don't end up with that many. But let's say I get like, I don't know, a, a remand and a force of will. That would be awesome. That'd be like on the high end. I'm doing well on burn. I actually would play another draw seven. And I have one busted card, but I would take another. Huh. Well, I'm just going to take a braid. I, I do like coveted jewel, but we're not we're not doing that. And we're not, we don't have the mana for elite spellbinder either. Well, you know, figure of destiny is not crazy. I don't think I want a white black tap land. That seems pretty far away from what I'm doing. So we'll just take figure, even if... We'll see what our mana looks like at the end of it. Oh, wow. Fire Covenant wield. So did Leyline Binding, which is nice, but I have a really good fixing for Fire Covenant. That's a really great sign. Oh, and so did Questing Druid. Questing Druid's kind of nice here, too. I have a bit of a green splash. And then a Shober Brawler did come back. All right, we're, we're in... Oh, last pick Tamiya. We'll keep that in, the, in, the, in there. Let's get, let's get a little Time Walk action and then instead maybe work on a Triumph or two so we can get to five colors. I mean, we're already at four, so just like a white X land would uh, would fully level up the Neshoba Brawler. <laughs> the way this is going, the, the blue cards are getting lower and the other cards are getting bigger. Oh, I'm slamming Fiery Confluence. I, I do like Preordain, trust me. I, I rarely pass this card. Probably can see that. But Fiery Confluence, when I have Firebolt, Lightning Bolt, and Fiery Confluence, like we're talking just burning them out from, from pretty high life totals. Passing up on... A Zeotor's Proving Ground? No, this pack's too weak for anything to wheel, so no power there or here, but it's all right. Uh, there was a there's a point in the draft where I would have taken Brain Freeze here, but we are we are kind of past that point. I'm actually wondering if if it's crazy to take Lotus Cobra here, because honestly, I don't have that many blue cards. Like they're not that good. I mean, Mana Leak is, and I would like to keep Brainstorm, Mana Leak, and maybe Malcolm. But all these double blue cards, I could maybe ditch those and and be more of a red-green base. And then one of these lands will come back, and they're all good for me, except maybe the Firing Vantage, I guess, isn't. I don't think I need Burst Lightning here. There is also Vendillion Click, and Vendillion Click would be good in this deck. And then I would maybe get to play these good blue cards. I guess Dig Through Time is really good in this deck, so is Time Warp. I think I'm still going to take Cobra, and we'll figure out the mana. This is not really an Ancient Tomb deck so much. Well, this isn't really helping. I mean, Fire Ice is fine if I take that. Pyrokinesis is also a great card. It's like a, a Fury that you don't have the option to cast, so it is quite a, quite a bit worse than Fury. But uh, I think Fire Ice probably is still the pick here. Fire Ice is really good. All right. I was hoping for a little bit more of this pack. If I can get a, another couple duels and one more Counterspell, then we'll have a solid deck. I mean... This is really not the best Mana Crypt deck in the world, but that's okay. Mana Crypts are still that good. Oh, pain. The one time I didn't take Brain Freeze. Um, okay, how many Warriors do I have? Let's see. Kithkin. Human Knight. This has to be a Warrior. Okay, that's a Human Warrior. That's a Human Druid. That's a Snake. This has to be a Warrior. Okay, that's a Warrior. It's a Pirate. It's a Shaman. Yeah, I don't really understand Najila the Blade Blossom being in this cube, but I'm sure it won't be in the next update. Uh, maybe I just take Copperline Gorge. Maybe I just settle for that. I'm at about the right amount. The other option, honestly, I could take Breach. I could ditch Dig Through Time and take Breach. Actually, no, that's actually good. Because look, Breach with Lightning Bolt in particular is actually really good, and Breach with Wheel of Fortune can be good too. I don't think I'm going to get an LED at this point, but... um. There's a Gruel Turf here, which when you have Fast Bond, Gruel Turf's not a crazy thing to consider. 
Oh, I actually have infinite mana. Lotus Cobra, Fast Bond, Gruel Turf. I mean, that's paying one life for a mana. What else is there? Well, there's Trinket Mage that would get one thing. I don't really love that. There's Once Upon a Time, which is okay, but I'm kind of liking this Gruel Turf idea. I also think against people who don't have Wasteland, Gruel Turf's a perfectly reasonable card to cast. Well, I'm slamming Fable. That's not close. Fable's amazing, and it's like the perfect card to Mana Crypt. I love Sheldock. I actually would like Hallowed Fountain to get to five land types if possible, but I'm not turning down a six-pick Fable. That's that's crazy. Uh, this pack has not much for me. There's Zurin Orb, but I don't have the Crucible element, the Critical Crucible element. There's also Flame Slash. I guess I could take Zurin Orb and see if Crucible or Ramanop show up. I mean, it's not crazy to do that. I don't care much for Fiery Islet. I really don't think... Honestly, I don't think I'm losing much by missing out on Flame Slash. So even though I don't think Crucible is necessarily going to make it, I, I, I'm not not too worried. Oh, there's Spelunking. So as a reminder, Spelunking also goes infinite with Fast Bonner. Again, not infinite, but it, it lets you pay a life to get two mana. Because the Ghoul Turf comes to play untapped. Yeah, and then I guess Spelunking also is just naturally a combo with Ghoul Turf. I don't care if I lose Witness here. All right. And here, oh, I'll take Sentinel. I love Sentinel. Another good Mana Crypt play. Oh, Vendilling Click and Burst Lightning came back. So did Courser. Courser, Fast Bond, plus Gruel Turf. It doesn't do anything itself. You break even. But then you add Cobra or Spelunking, and you have actual infinite mana then. Versus just taking Creeping Tar Pit, or just taking Burst Lightning, or just taking Vendilling Click. I'm kind of red-green now. I really don't like Courser that much overall. I guess with some fetch lands, yeah, I can see doing that. I just, I don't really need another burn spell is kind of what it comes down to. I'll take Rampaging Raptor here. This this is a card. Oh, there's Najila, but I think I'm still just going to take Copperline Gorge. Najila does not seem good. I don't really want to try to splash for Night of the Reliquary. All right, well, the, bre the Brain Freeze didn't come back. Not that I thought it would. Mm, I think I can get Cryptic out. I'm not sure about Dig Through Time and Time Warp. Those both seem good, though. I guess with Breach, I'm just not going to want to play Dig. And then I still have, like, oh, I got no lands this pack besides, like, two red-green lands. It's kind of a bummer. All right, well, let's see. I'm just Trinket Mage, which I guess gets multiple things now. Though I guess the Zurin Orb doesn't do too much. Maybe I should have taken that. Do I want this Voldaren Epicure or Earthshaker Kenra? Not too much. Someone's getting a last pick of Doomsday. So Faithless Looting, which I guess is a combo with Inti, but not the best looting deck. I mean, it's kind of good with Breach. Basically, what I want to do with Breach is get to enough mana that I just go Breach and just bolt you three times or whatever. All right. I mean, didn't open anything good. Did We got even Pat got past the Mana Crypt. But we have something here. I don't really know what that something is. So I need to cut, like... Three or four cards, depending on where you count Mana Crypt. Okay, I think Brea's Apprentice can probably go. Figure of Destiny also doesn't seem that exciting. I'm just, my mana's probably not going to be quite there on figure. I can play... Yeah, I can play Fire Covenant off of, I think, just Xander's Lounge with two fetches that get it, and then Lotus Cobra as, like, additional green or value and then oh and the treasures from fable fable treasures actually do make sense too wow, i have a lot of ways to discard this inti is going pretty hard so if i take time warp malcolm out that would get me to the right number i think i like brainstorm here brainstorm has a couple combos you can put cards back for courser when you know your top card like you can put a card back that you know you can play this turn for inti or questing druid kind of good with Breach in general. I, I think I like Brainstorm, and I think my my mana is going to be good enough. Let's see. Let's let's look by color here. This Time Warp's looking a little suspicious to me because I'm like red-green. I like my green cards a fair amount. Okay, that Taiga pick ended up being pretty nice. So let's add up to... Let's see if, if it would work to play the double blue card. 
let's see, I get to add uh, 11 lands from here. I know that's going to put me over 40. So let's see, let's see, five. So if I do five forests, that gives me eight, nine green sources. That is plenty. Four mountains gives me 10 red sources. I guess Gruel Turf's a little weird because it's not always reliable, but still, 10 red sources and five blue. Yeah, so we're just going to cut, honestly, most of the blue cards. I mean, what if I just went red green and just kind of spewed off my dual land equity? Honestly, that might be better. I'll have a. I'll have ice I can cast off of the Xander's Lounge because Xander's Lounge is still making it in for Fire Covenant and also the Neshoba likes having another land type. So if I do this, I get to I get to add a couple cards in. I could add like Brea's Apprentice. I mean, Faceless Looting's not crazy with like Inti and Underworld Breach. Corsair of Crufix, Sentinel. Let's see, is that better? Because then if I did that, I would add, let's see, 11 more lands here. Oh, then I couldn't play Polluted Delta. Because Tarn is fine, it can always get red, but if I'd be talking about a mana base where Delta gets one land, you can't, you can't do that. I also don't really want to give up Mana Leak, and this Faithless Looting is kind of bad. So what if I just play Mana Leak? And Brainstorm, I think, is going to be really good in this deck. And I cut the Bray's Apprentice. My last two cards get a lot better. I think I can afford to play like, like this. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then four, ten, and then two, three, four, five blue plus the other things. All right. All right, I think I like this interesting deck building. We'll see how this ends up playing out. I don't really know how good this deck is. I think if it draws Fast Bond a lot, it's probably going to do pretty well. It's got a lot of really good Fast Bond plays. I think the weakness is, I guess it just ended up not that high on power level. And pack three, we really did not get there on the lands. I was really hoping to get like maybe another fetch and at least one more duel. And instead kind of didn't get any of those things. So... Missed on a lot of the stuff. Blue really ended up being cut. The pack one blue was really good. I got a really late cryptic, late seal of removal, pretty late dig through time. I don't know. So I don't really know what happened there, but uh, let's see how the top eight goes. <laughs> that was a close one. I, I didn't submit my deck. I didn't like click the submit button. And with like 10 seconds left, I'm like, huh, someone's taking a long time. I'm like, I haven't submitted my deck. Luckily I did. We have a deck of 40 cards and we're gonna get to play our match. The thing is, it's not even 40 like great cards. It's just okay. So we'll see if we can take down the top eight of the 64 player event. I did win another one of these and uh, with a much worse deck. So everything's possible. Uh, love having these two cards in my opening hand when I really, really would rather not. But that's okay. The problem is I don't have a way to shuffle. So once that breach gets wheeled away, then that is it for the breach. And breach is a card in this deck especially. I don't want my opening hand. I actually want to draw like as late as possible. But I think uh, I think this hand was still keepable because Firebolt into Sentinel is pretty decent and uh, I think is worth, worth running. Uh, Celestial Colonnade. Maybe this is the person who cut blue for me. All right, excuse the... Card sizing, I had to change the resolution here. All right, let's get Xander's Lounge and draw Mana Crypt. It's just all I'm going to draw. If I draw a lot of Mana Crypts, then this deck might might have some game. Uh, I think I'm actually not going to play the Fetch because if I draw Lotus Cobra, I can go Cobra, Fetch, Sentinel, which is pretty decent. They're just going to pass here with Mana up and the game's just over. They're just going to counter my next thing. What is this? Urza. Okay. Well, that's that's not great. Firebolt really being not that helpful here as a sorcery. Oh, um, get Taiga. I think I actually just go destroy target artifact. No, hold on. Hold on. So I have two options. I can Firebolt the Construct and Abrade the Talisman. Or I can play Sentinel. And that gives them two more mana to work with. But I 
think gives me a much bigger chance of winning the game. Because I'm going to miss my next land drop. Playing Sentinel means if I do, I can try to like explore with the map token to hit it. Get an attack in. I might even be able to like bait them into blocking with Urza, at which point a burn spell can finish things off. If they have a big play here, they have a big play here. I, you know, can't do much about that. Like, I could have killed two of their lands, but then if they just go land four drop, I'm just so far behind. Whereas Sentinel, getting something going seems a lot stronger than, than not. They do get to spin with theirs, and I, I kind of have to hope to fade that. If, But if that's their best play, that's also not that bad. So, I guess if you were going to spin with Urza, you might not play your land first as well. So, let's see what my opposition has. Ghoul Turf. Oh, looking bad. Nice. Um, let's just attack first. All right. Let's see what they got. They could animate Colonnade and Block. I'm okay with that. Because then I get to kill the Colonnade here and then play Rampaging Raptor next turn. Okay. And let's go Firebolt the Colonnade. I mean, if that's their play, that's really not that bad. And then I think I'm going to blow up the Talisman. Cut them off of white mana and then play Gruel Turf. You know, if they don't have a way to kill the Gruel Turf, it's kind of nice to get a land that's a two for one here. Now they can't even uh, spin Urza without a land. All right. Glimmer Lens. Well, at least they can't equip it. Okay. So here, I'm going to hope they don't have anything. It would be really nice if they didn't, because I'm going to go Fiery Confluence, deal, destroy target artifact, deal two damage to each creature. All right. Please let this work. Please let this work. They have three mana up with Urza, so... Uh, that was just going to kill everything because I was going to get to bolt the Urza too and finish it off I guess I bolt the Construct they're still going to get to draw a card off of uh, Glimmer Lens which puts me in a pretty bad spot I mean I have Underworld Breach I can Breach and cast two spells what I might need to do Oh, we're tapping a bunch of mana first. What are we doing? Unctus. Other blue creatures you control. And when this creature becomes tapped, draw a card and discard a card. Yeah, I'm going to see a bunch of cards here. The good thing is, we haven't seen that much of their deck, but it doesn't look that great. Like in It doesn't look like a busted Urza Academy deck. It just looks kind of like an Esper mid-range deck. So we'll see. But I don't really like where we're at. I really, really can tell you that. Uh, I don't want to breach. You know what I want to do? I want to play a Rampaging Raptor and then use a map token on it. I want to hit a land here. Okay, land. Use another map token on it. Here, I'm a little... I'm like, whatever. I'll hit a land or not. And then I'm definitely not attacking here. And then next turn, now that I hit those two lands, I can go breach... Fiery Confluence Bolt, and I actually still could kill all their stuff. Oh, they have something? Oh, I don't like that. Because hopefully this is like a flash creature. I guess I have the Malcolm. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Eh. All right. Wait, they have something else too? Don't like that. Maybe it's just trying to activate Urza, but they're one mana short. I can only hope. Because next turn, my plan is to go Underworld Breach, cast Fiery Confluence, destroy Unctus and Glimmer Lens, deal two damage to each creature. Or, wait, no, I can't do that. I guess I'd have to destroy Unctus and deal two damage to each creature and then bolt the Urza. Okay. Hopefully this is spinning Urza and not something large. <coughs> okay, new plan. Oh, man, they hit Converter to go with Unctus? <laughs> uh, this is brutal. I am getting worked here. That miscalculation was, like, 
the whole thing, basically. Oh, they had snap and they didn't snap my raptor in response to the map tokens? Mm, that was a misstep. Okay. So, what I might do... No, I have to kill Unctus. I guess I could blow up Unctus in deal two, but then they just put this into play end of turn. Mm -hmm. I think I'm at seven. Let's go Breach. I'm kind of close to Breach wheel wheeling them, but we're not there. I could... I could go Confluence. Confluence, kill Unctus. No, I'm just trying to think of how I can get around this. Kill Unctus, kill Converter, kill Glimmer Lens. Bolt Urza, they make a 2-2. I mean, I guess I have to kill Converter and Unctus, at which point... Oh, no, I have to deal one to everything to kill Urza. Yeah, and I have to kill Urza, too. All right. So let's go Fiery Confluence. Destroy, destroy. Pay one. Yeah, one more mana would have been really perfect here. Done. It would have been... Because then I could have... No, they can't have another counter. <laughs> I guess factually they can. All right, well, that wasn't close, was it? I'm playing against Blue White Urza. Well, I still like Mana Leak. So I still like the Blue Splash. Still don't really want Malcolm. No, I like the way the deck's built. Let's draw Mana Crypt, I guess. All right, time for game two. That was one of those games where I just felt like I was losing badly the entire game. It was brutal. I'm going to keep this because I'm going to have a 4 3 trample on turn two. Turn one, Delta, get. Uh, Xander's Lounge, turn two, Forest, and Neshoba Brawler. Confluence is the nuts against them, of course. And then I might just pass and then fire off a questing druid at the end of their turn. So I think that's going to be my plan here. We'll see how it goes. No mana crypts for me. If I was feeling lucky, I could fire off the questing druid on turn three with one mana up and then hit mana crypt and play something, but... <laughs> Let's not, uh, let's not go too far here. All right. Brawler battling against their squad. Two mana, four, three tramples. It's not bad. It's all, in this deck, it's basically <laughs> going to be a two mana, two, three, except if I draw Delta, Tarn, or Lounge, it just becomes a four, three. Oh, no, it could be a three, three off just Island, too. So that's not too bad. Hmm. Oh, I guess because of Cobra, I could maybe not play Tarn. I was thinking of just cracking because I don't really want to draw lands here. And I'm going to cast the Questing Druid, the Seek the Beast. I don't think I want to ice yet. I might ice if they're going to play Urza or something. And let's see, do they have a Counterspell? It's actually fine if they Counterspell this because then I just get to play Raptor and Slam. Uh, we'll Seek that Beast. You're going to miscalculation this? It's a tempting one. Yeah, you kind of have to because if you don't, at the very least, I'm going to be able to play Dryad next turn if I want. And that you can't uh, miscalculate. So, oh, Mana Leak. Well, I can't play Mana Leak yet. I still have to just play this first. But if they don't have a good play next turn, they're just dead. Like, I just hit them for eight <laughs> and then hit them for eight. Also, I just completely juked miscalculation with this card. They left it up on turn two. I just played nothing. So their mana was completely wasted. And then I cast it. They use their turn three mana on it. And then my turn four play comes down. I mean, I also have eight points of burn in hand. So if they pay the life on water, degree, they're just dead to fiery confluence. But also if they don't have balance here exactly, then they're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, Unctus ain't going to do it. <laughs> Let's... Ice the Unctus with... This just wins the game with Mana Leak up. Not that they had a great game here either. It was just going to be chump one of your creatures with Unctus go to four. All right, well, I guess just do that again. I don't think Earthshaker Kenner is what I want or Figure of Destiny. Malcolm's kind of interesting against their counter spells. 
Like, is this whole spelunking thing just stupid? Seems like it could come together. I have some good card draw. Eh, let's just fire like this. I think that's fine. Okay, game three on the draw. Okay, I mean, I will keep this. Fire Covenant also is kind of nice. It cleans up Urza and Co. nicely. Swamp. Um, I'm actually going to play the Tarn because I don't think the world where I resolve Cobra and then play Fetch is that reasonable. And I really do want to get Xander's Lounge, which is a tap land. Like, I actually think there's a pretty good chance they just counter the Cobra here. Still going to play it, but... I just think saving a fetch for the Cobra doesn't seem necessary. Don't even really care about this Cobra. Oh, no plays. Do they not have a play end of turn either? They have to have something. It's kind of weird to not. Okay, they're going to Fatal Push me or whatever. That's fine. That's fine. Next turn I get to Fable. Really hope the Fable resolves. Uh, I guess I have backup if it doesn't. I'm kind of expecting this to get countered, but can you do if you have a counter oh they're forcing it oh okay I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy about that that is a lot better force pick, pitching murktide region well <laughs> murktide region isn't a playable cube card so it wasn't that bad but palantir okay no land okay well they're definitely not drawing a card here all right can i draw one of my artifact removal spells or actually rampaging raptor would be really nice here Took no damage. There's Spelunking. Oh, this actually is pretty great here. Okay. So I'm going to give up on my combo. Actually, I don't even have to give up on my combo. Play Spelunking. Draw a card. I'm going to put a land card onto the battlefield. Sure, I'll play that. Play Gruel Turf. I'll enter untapped. And then tap it for mana and actually just return the Gruel Turf because now... I can just play it. Like if I draw a fast bond, that's infinite mana. Let's go season pyro here. I think now I just discard brainstorm and fire covenant. And uh, oh, there's wheel and inti. Okay, wheel. They're kind of stuck on like a mediocre draw, so I'm not the most excited on 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 wheel, but. Next turn, I'm probably going to go Inti. No, you can't draw a card. Unacceptable. Shieldred and, and uh, thing. Sure. Let's go Inti first. They can't miscalculate it. I don't need to play a land here. What I think I'm going to do is going to go... Oh. Snap the Inti. Okay, I'm not that attached to the having Inti out right now that I have to counter that, I don't think. All right, do I play into Toxic Deluge? Yeah, I mean, I think I do. Oh, I don't have to, actually. No, I can just go... I can just play my boy Gruel Turf. Tap it for mana. Return to Gruel Turf, Turf play Inti, and have mana leak up. All right, you know, Spelunking's actually been awesome this game. It drew me a card and, and generated a bunch of Gruel Turf mana. Uh, that I will mana leak. Gr we're getting close to Wheel of Fortune time here. And now if they want to use Miscalc here, if they've drawn it, they're, they're welcome to. I'm also getting to the point where I don't think I want to bin their card. I think I want to let them draw. I'm at 14. There's just no reason to lose. They're, they're, a tinker, they're an artifact deck. They could just have like a 9-drop in their deck. And I think them drawing a card is not that bad. Oh, there's the Fast Bond. <laughs> Okay, I'm really glad I didn't do that now. I'll enter untapped, tap for mana. Oh, this is going to be sick. I actually don't even want to play the, the island because uh, I want it to discard to, to Inti. Okay. <laughs> the, the only thing that's kind of unfortunate here, you know, if anything could be said to be unfortunate, is I kind of have to choose how much I'm doing before wheeling because... Uh, once I wheel, the Gruel Turf's, like, the whole chain is 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 ended. Because I either leave it in my hand, in which case the wheel discards it, or I uh, play it, in which case the, the combo is stopped. But this is this is sick. 
I, I'm, I'm loving this. Okay. Turn Gruel Turf. So how much, how much mana do I want to make? I mean, I, I don't mind taking some damage. In fact, their shield rids in the graveyard. I'm already letting them draw off Palantir every time. I think just a couple more is probably fine. <laughs> Obviously, it's going to be kind of dumb if uh, the wheel gets countered, but, you know, what can you do? Can't believe I doubted you, Spelunking. Okay, so I have 12 mana. Let's do like one more after this or something. Because I also can just play other lands. And I don't need to. Uh... All right, that's enough mana, I think. Oh, then I'll play this and then just not bounce it. And let's return a forest. Uh, I don't even think I want to play anything else. I think I just cast wheel here. Wheel with a lot of mana floating. All right, well, oh, and there's Corsair, so it's too bad. Too bad we're done with that for now. Oh, and I, I exiled Fiery Confluence. This has been a really cool turn. All right, let's play Corsair. Now we don't take damage. Oh, and we get to play lands off the top. Oh, wow, and we're actually going off pretty hard here. <laughs> Uh, let's play with Pluto Delta. We're somehow just like completely going off. I got to make sure not to get brain freezed out, but I think I'm going to be able to win this turn. Also, no spells have been played. It's actually just been a bunch of game actions taken. All right, let's play Rampaging Raptor. <laughs> That's a mana sink if I've ever seen one. Mm. They're at 15. That's Fiery Confluence. Just dealing damage to the opponent. And then now they're like super dead. There's so much that's killing them here. Their hand was Island Winds of Abandoned Glimmerland Urza. Sure. I mean, they can't even counter this. They've already even used Force of Will. Oh, we got there. And that is a dub. Even get to discard to Inti and do more stuff. Let's pump the Raptor. Why not? All right. Well, not really how I expected this to go, but uh, I will take it. Attack with everything. Uh, here, yeah, I guess I would still discard here, even if they had brain freeze up, because uh, at this point I'm not even drawing a card, so I'm just exiling my top card. So even a brain freeze putting me to zero cards in deck right now wouldn't matter. Boom, that's round one. We're on to the top four here. Alrighty, we stole round one, but uh, let's go to round two. Let's see if we can we can steal another one. Ooh. I mean, this hand's pretty bad. I do have a Brainstorm. So I can go get a Xander's Lounge and Brainstorm. Yeah, I think that that is enough to keep this hand. Underworld Breach is a pretty bad card to have in the opener, so I don't really want that. But I think and it's kind of annoying that my fetch lands my blue source. But Fiery Confluence on the play, casting this on turn four is often going to be pretty good. There's not that many decks where it's not good. Like, it's not good against Reanimator or Control. It's good against any aggro deck and, and, and the Artifact deck. Though I suppose we did play against an Urza Currency Converter deck just now, which does make this a little bit worse. But we'll see. Maybe we'll find another fetch land. Maybe we'll just draw a sick two drop. Don't love that because... It's not going to be untapped by the time I can kill it with uh, <laughs> Fiery Confluence. Mm, I guess I'm going to brainstorm without playing my land, because I'm going to do it this turn if I draw a fetch land. All right, well, let's put these back and play Copper Line Gorge. I don't think it makes too much sense to play. Uh, the Gruel Turf this turn. In fact, I kind of, when I have enough lands, I kind of just don't want to play it because I want to keep the Fast Barn Gruel Turf action live. Not the best Brainstorm, but not the worst. I hit two interactive spells. So what this game's kind of going to come down to, at least the beginning of the game, is is whatever they play off, Man of Vault, something I can Lightning Bolt. This is the worst possible card. All right, well, <laughs> I can't really imagine winning now. Okay, my odds of winning have definitely gone up as they played that card. That doesn't make sense with any of their other cards. 
All right, uh, I guess I'll just play this Taiga and pass. See what happens. I don't really have anything. I mean, maybe if they tap their Ancient Tomb a bunch of times, I can, like, and take damage off Mana Vault, I can, like, bolt them to death. I have, I have Breach as my next card. Hmm. Okay. We'll see if they have a thing to sneak into play. Obviously, that's just going to end the game if they do. Well, all right. Uh, sure. They're 15. Oh, and they're sneaking. Never mind. Never mind. Astral Dragon. Making two taigas. Okay. Well, honestly, this could be worse. Um, well, I'm going to Fiery Confluence next turn. Sadly, not to deal damage to them, but I'm just going to deal three. The, the Astral Dragon is going to die, and the, these are all going to die. The question is, do I want to braid a Lightning Greaves? I don't really think so. I'll take... But I'm also, yeah, maybe maybe I just shouldn't take the extra damage. Sure. All right. Abrade your greaves. Take six down to 13. Then I'll kill your all your creatures and hope they don't have too much follow-up. One damage to each creature. All right. Yeah, I guess that's the plan. And right now I've got one bolt in the chamber here. Uh, they're taking an extra point of damage now to not take damage later. I'm tapping with Mana Vault. Restless Bivouac, what is going on over there? All right, action. Oh, that is action. That is action, indeed. Let's seek the beast first, see what's up. Hit Mana Crypt and Mountain. Well... That's not ideal. Play Questing Druid. I'm going to play the Mana Crypt. I kind of feel like Breach into Fiery Confluence is powerful enough that it's worth playing Mana Crypt here. It's going to be really hard to win this game. But if they don't draw another sneak target and... I can just cheese them out. They're taking some damage here. Othari, well, that's actually not too bad because I have Lightning Bolt kill your Othari. Druid gets a counter. Actually, now I get to go Breach. This becomes a 3-3. Confluence, it becomes a 4-4. Four, four. I can deal 10 to them. Hmm. Okay, okay. Lost the flip. Shoba Brawler. Can only cast one card out of here. Is there a way to do better? So if I brainstorm, I'll go down to two cards. This is close. Because I could breach, cast brainstorm, and if I draw a fetch land, so then brainstorm will be in the graveyard. Oh, man, I'm really not quite there. I think this is the turn to do this. Basically, I could just fiery confluence them. Deal six to them. This would be a four four. I'd attack them down to one. Or brainstorm and hope to hit. The thing is, any spell I hit also. I guess here do I I think I leave the fiery confluence in the graveyard. No, no, no. I think I leave the lightning bolt in the graveyard. The thing is, brainstorm also does one, and any red spell I hit pumps the druid too. So let's go. Um Okay, let's, let's see. If I put back Brawler, oh, this is kind of interesting. Let's go Brawler Cobra. Sentinel. And then map token that, mill the Cobra. I end up being slightly short of winning here, but this still, I mean, this still does a ton of damage. And 
had I drawn a fetch land to go out there, I would have, I would have, no, well, I guess I wouldn't have won, but it would have been very close. Okay. Their mana vault's untapped. I'm unfortunately drawing a Neshoba Brawler. I think that's okay. They're at six. They have to have something to sneak into play. Or they have to have some kind of play. It doesn't have to be a sneak. The sneak is the way they would they could win. They can make this into a 2-2. Two -two. It doesn't do too much. Yeah, I was one card in Graveyard short of doing something, something spicy. But as a result, so the difference is they have five more life. This thing's bigger. And I have a Sentinel in play. Okay, heads. Winning the flip's nice. No reason to play that first. Let's just attack here. Okay, at least I get my map token. Let's see if they have a defensive sneak. Looks like they do. Uh, kind of. <laughs> Unfortunately, this does get them to shell dock, but they don't have a second blue. I think I'm going to map token anyway. Rod has firebrand. Um, yeah, I'll put that in the graveyard. The fact that they have Sheldock active now, I don't think really matters because they're. If they draw blue, then they can, even if it's not active on their turn, they could still Sheldock on my turn. Okay, no blue mana, no sneak card. Not every sneak card wins at this point in time either. Like Emrakul still would, but like Ulamog and Kozilek wouldn't win the game here. I would just sack a mana crypt and three lands, chump, and then attack back. So, oh, there is a chance here. There's a chance that we are going to be up a game. Let's find out. All right, up a game, playing against what looked like a decent sneak deck that had a patchwork automaton and a lightning greaves in it, and I don't really know what's up with those. Uh, I don't really have much in the way of sideboard. It's not like Steel of Rule is even good against sneak attack. I think we're ready to battle, that's what I think. <laughs> All right, looks like they are too. Let's see what they got. Uh, yeah, I mean, I will keep this hand. This has a mana leak, so if they turn two sneak, if they go mana vault again. Oh, Mox Sapphire, I don't love that. What is this? Hopefully this is something I can firebolt. No, well. My mana leak's going to be way too slow here, unless I drew Fast Bond. Fast Bond would be a nice draw. Let's let's hope they don't plan, slam something this turn. Okay, Sheldock, that might mean they don't have a play yet. In which case, I'll at least have to have mana leak up. Though, Sheldock is kind of bad news because it makes this Wheel of Fortune quite the liability. All right, let's go get Xander's Lounge. Draw... Forest past the turn. It'd be nice to go Mana Leak into Corsair. Wouldn't mind uh, getting a nice Fiery Confluence off at some point here. Unfortunately, they have so much mana, it's going to be pretty hard to Mana Leak them. Huh? Well, it is possible, though. <laughs> Horn of Bounty. No, I don't like that. I mean, obviously, they could have a counter back. But if they don't, then that was pretty good. Okay, okay, okay. Let's draw. Well, certainly no option but play Corsair here. Mountain on top? Well, at least a mountain's good for me, though obviously I would have wished it would be second from the top instead with a nice little spell on top. <laughs> okay, they have a bunch of mana. Misha's Factory, what is going on over here? They have Tinker? Oh no, they're just untapping Grim Monolith now? Well... That makes my job a little easier because now I'm going <laughs> to Fiery Confluence. Uh, destroy target artifact, destroy target artifact, two to each opponent. All right. And I'll take it. Take two. Still don't feel like we should be winning these games, but it's kind of working out. Let's see what they got next. Ugh. Why did they draw that? That's a problem. Okay, top card, play my mountain. Top card's a forest. Let's go Pyromancer. I'm going to discard Wheel of Fortune. I'm not playing that card. I'm going to discard Wheel of Fortune and Island, I think. 
think I'd rather just have Firebolt in hand. Oh, I think I think I'm gonna wait a turn here on the Firebrand because I have Ice. Icing a, a card they sneak into play could be pretty good. Mistress Workshop, Anduril. Uh, I'll be honest, their deck's pretty bad. Like they have a Mox, they have a Mana Vault, they have Sneak. I, I can understand. <laughs> oh my god. I can understand why this is all going the way it is, but like, or why they won round one, but like, they have a lot of cards that don't really fit together, which, I mean, I'm, I'm over here with uh, <laughs> Fast Bond and Wheel of Fortune in my Red Green Beats deck, so I, mean, I kind of know what you mean. I could have fired it, but then they could just pump it, so that's not that great of a plan. Oh, Underworld Breach. I'm actually pretty close to just killing them. Actually, wait, can I kill them right now? They're at 12, I attack for six, I play, I have to play Inti. I mean, I don't, the thing is, if I play Inti and I attack and discard, I'll exile Breach, and then I have to cast Breach this turn, so I gotta actually figure this out. Also, I have 22 cards. No, let's not make Sheldock active. So let's send for five, and I think I'm just gonna go Firebolt you play an island, gain a life, and firebolt you. All right, now I just have lethal with breach next turn off fiery confluence or fire ice, honestly. If they wanna do their like <laughs> animate factory and thing, that doesn't do anything. If they sneak, I mean, they could just win off a sneak attack. That is always the case. They could play the one ring or something. <laughs> they could play lightning greaves, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, it basically looks like they just have like part of a sneak deck and part of an artifact deck all jammed together and then Breach is their last card. But I don't really have sympathy for them. They put Lightning Greaves and Anduril in their sneak attack deck. Like, kind of what do you expect to happen? All right, well, we stole that one and now we're on to the finals. All right, it is finals time and we've got a, we've got our best bud Spelunkin ready to explore. This This is actually a fine hand. It's a little mana heavy and... I swear to God, if I draw Xander's Lounge on turn one, which is the last thing this Delta could fetch, I'm going to be so mad. But turn two, four, three Brawler, turn three Spelunking, or maybe leave up Mana League, depending on kind of what I'm up to. That's a that's a fine start. I think uh, I think I'm good with all that. Opponent it mold to six here. But I will repeat, if my if I draw Xander's Lounge on turn one, I am going to be mad. Lotus Petal, okay. Don't do it. Okay, well. Honestly, drawing a mountain is about as bad, <laughs> but at least it's not a complete, completely dead draw. I just need to not draw lands with this hand. And if I draw lands, could I at least just hook me up with a Gruel Turf? Ooh, okay. Well, maybe I'll get a chance to mana leak something that they sack Lotus Petal on. Oh, I like Inti. All right, I am going to play the, the Brawler, though. I don't think it really makes sense to leave Mana Leak up this early when I don't have anything in play. I am an aggro deck after all. So let's just play the Brawler. Start start brawling. Next turn's a little more interesting. Like, do I play Inti? Do I play Spelunking? Do I play nothing? It kind of depends on what they do here. I assume they're going to crack Heath. So they probably drew the Windswept Heath on turn two, especially if they get a tap land like a Triome here, which pretty likely chance. Because otherwise you would have led with the Windswept Teeth on turn one. Though if they get an untapped land, then it, may, it makes it a little bit more likely that they didn't lead with Heath on purpose. So we'll see. Like if your hand was Swamp, Windswept Heath, and you wanted to draw a third land, you didn't have one, you might lead on Swamp and then play Heath. But then you wouldn't crack the Heath. Oh, what is this? Bowmasters. I don't like seeing that, especially if they if they cast a draw seven here. Obviously, I'm just dead. But my hand isn't like super vulnerable to it or anything. Dothy Voidwalker, yeah, that's a little annoying too. All right, well, Fire Ice, huh? Mana leak. They have no cards in hand. Hmm, what do you do here? I am just going to go for the Gusto here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to play Inti. I'm going to attack with the Brawler. And I'm going to discard an Island here. It's going to get exiled. 
my breach gets a little worse. And I'm just going to hit for a five. And if I hit a land, eh, I mean, it's not even that I really wanted to hit a land, but that was pretty close to drawing a card just by making it so I don't draw a land next turn. And then, of course, playing the land means we got the card back. All right, well, if they don't have a good play this turn, then I feel really good about my situation. Because next turn I'm going to have Fire Ice plus Mana Leak up. Like, I'll just win if they don't make a good play there here. Because I'll have eight power in play and a Mana Leak up, and they haven't played a third land. Fire... I guess I could fire the Bowmasters and the Orc, and then they could cast fire off Dothy Voidwalker, but if I get an attack in with Inti first and make Inti into a 3-3, three, three, then I don't care about that. I could also just fire the Dothy Voidwalker. I could also fire neither. It's not like they're winning the race by attacking with Voidwalker. But we'll, we'll see what they have here. Obviously, there's some stuff they could have that would be pretty scary. So... They look more like a black-white beatdown deck than a deck that's going to cast a Time Twister. <laughs> so that's good news, Because, but they have a Lotus Petal, so you never know. Well, they clearly have something here. I mean, there's a lot of things that wreck me. When they, when they have an untapped Dothy Voidwalker in play, you can never be too happy. Like, I don't know, imagine they go like Collective Brutality, discard a card, kill your Inti, you take your Fire Ice... Sack Voidwalker, play the Inti out of exile, attack with Bowmasters and the Orc, you know, discard a card to to trigger Inti. Like, that sort of thing could easily happen. And even just one kill spell here. I guess they can kill my Brawler and recasting it isn't going to do that much. And that leaves me with an Inti. Or they kill my Inti and I have a 5-4 Trample that's going to win the game pretty fast. So, yeah. There's a lot of things that could go badly for me here, but things do look good before they've cast anything. All right, here we go. Oh, they're sacking their thing, and they're playing a Grist. I see, because they're going to minus the Grist. But it cost them a Lotus Petal. Okay, what are they going to kill is kind of the question. And I mean, the Inti is actually kind of more dangerous here. All right, I feel pretty good about this, because now I'm going to go fire, kill your Bowmasters, kill your Grist. Okay, and then... Are they going to sack the Voidwalker to play a 2-3? They kind of have to, or Inti just attacks the Grist. Oh, I mean, this could actually just be a disaster for them. If they put a Nishoba into play, and then I attack as a 3-3 into Grist, and they double block, I just kill all their permanents. All right. Here we go. You got your 2-3. Mm, I don't need to play my land first, I don't think. Well, that's not true. I'm going to play, well, I don't care if I miss out on a land drop. I really want to be able to have Fire Ice plus Mana Leak up. Though I suppose they're really not going to, I don't know, I guess it doesn't matter that much. They're, they're not going to, there's no way they have Snuff out in hand. So, let's see, maybe I gave up an extra land, sure, I guess I did. Okay. And they should just not block here. Well, I don't know what they should do. From my perspective, if they don't block here, that's a better play for them. Um, I'm giving up a little bit of damage, but I'm tempting them to, to double block. Oh, yes. That is the skipper. All right, look at this. Fire ice is just going to be so obscene here. Kill those two. They might have thought, well, at the very least, my Grist will live. Nope. Grist goes down, that goes down, Brawler goes down, and then I pass with Mana Leak up. Oh, yeah. I guess I didn't really need to play around Snuff Out, so I could have not played my land first, but like I said, whatever. Okay. So I traded Fire Ice and Brawler for those four cards. It's pretty good. Getting out of a Bowmaster <laughs> and Grist and... Voidwalker for just Fire Ice and Neshoba Brawler. That's amazing. I did discard a card to make this bigger, and I guess I missed out on playing a land from Exile instead, but I think that's okay. Okay, what do we got? What is this? A Green Sun Zenith? Whatever, I mean, whatever this is, I'm going to counter it. Prismatic Ending? Oh, Pest Infestation for one? That's fine. 
Two one ones is really not that threatening. Oh, season pyro. Oh, this is interesting. Um, I think I'm actually going to cast the pyromancer first, and the reason I'm doing that is I want I don't want to discard mana leak, and I do want to use inti. So I'm going to discard these two. It's going to trigger inti. I'm going to get two cards back in hand. Now there's a questing druid. Uh, I'm not stoked about casting that and leaving that. Well, they're not really in a position to to really punish me for not leaving on mana leak. I, I know famous last words, but like their, la their last turn's play wasn't that good. Uh, well, I can't fast bond, so. Take four, and then play a land, and I'll cast Seek the Beast, which really doesn't even do anything because the only card I could play would be Mana Crypt. Ha, <laughs> and I drew the Mana Crypt, sure. I'm at 17, I'll, I'll, I'll play it. And then I'll pass, and then Next turn, I can play the Questing Druid. Yeah, it did actually cost me playing the land the one turn when I didn't need to. I was like, yeah, you know, might as well do this. But it's like, I mean, I'm going to win this game anyway, I would assume, like barring them having something pretty good here. But that 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 minor thing did cascade a little bit, I'll say that. All right, well, they drew their fourth land, so they can play a four drop. I mean, I guess if they play Damnation, I'll be kind of unhappy. But... They can't cast Dam with the, the good kicker. Reanimate the Grist. Well, I couldn't even stop that if I wanted to. Okay. I guess they have to minus it to kill the Inti. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a little closer now. If their last card is something good, then this could be a little problematic. Okay, it's not. Let's draw. And I've hit a lot of lands so far, so I'm due for some spells. Do I tell you. Ooh, that's a spell. Uh, I am going to cast that, and because I don't have an extra green, I actually can't <laughs> cast the Questing Druid. Though I could draw a forest off of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the map on the Elemental token. So it beats a Pest token in a fight. Oh, forest is so good, because now I can play a Questing Druid. It's on an adventure. And they're at eight. Yeah, I'm going to sacrifice a little damage here. But I have to attack Grist with both. My, my elemental token didn't even get a plus one, plus one. So, yeah, there's no real point in blocking. They might want to keep that. All right, I feel like <clears throat> I'm pretty much set up here for success. Like, they'd have to play something good and get around Mana Leak. And I guess they're not literally dead here, but they're pretty close. Oh, no. <laughs> that, that would make my offense slow to a crawl. So they're like obs on tokens. Okay. I'm pretty good against Pest Infestation. I just got to make sure not to play the Mana Crypt unless I you need to use it, but that's always what you do with Mana Crypt, so <laughs> that's not any different. Does this one, you want to change anything? Brainstorm against uh, Bowmasters isn't great. Brainstorm has been pretty good so far, though. I will say that. I kind of want Brea's Apprentice. Fire Covenant's going to be nice here. I might take out the Brainstorm. I don't know. It's really bad against that. Wheel of Fortune is also like a potential liability, but I don't really know what I can do about that. I don't want to put in like Voldar and Epicure. Malcolm? I guess Malcolm would be a way to attack a Planeswalker, but I think the Spelunking is fine. I don't really, I don't want to cut Wheel of Fortune. I could cut Wheel of Fortune, but it's it's a really good card. Like when, when Wheel's good, it's it's incredible. So, and I have Fast Bond and Mana Crypt in my deck. I think I'll just end the Gruel Turf thing. This matchup actually doesn't seem too bad, honestly. Like Fiery Confluence is just going to be the nuts against them. Having a bunch of bolts is great. They have a bunch of small creatures. I have four bolts or whatever. If I draw like a late Underworld Breach, it could be awesome. I mean, I haven't really fabled anyone. Yeah, we've got we've got some good stuff here. Uh, unfortunately, this hand is not even close to being a keeper. I'd be suspicious of a five lander, but I'd probably keep this if two of these were mountains. As, as it currently stands, it's not remotely close to being keepable. Uh, we'll go ahead and mulligan. Oh, it looks like they mulliganed as well. Oh, this hand's great. This hand needs a red mana really badly. But I'm definitely going to keep... I'm just going to put a forest back. It's greedy, I know, but if I draw red, I can cast all my spells. 
So I'm the forest. The only thing the forest helps me with is if I do a green three drop in before. Uh, I guess it would have helped me cast ice on turn two here or turn one because I wasn't going to cast this questing druid with a fast bond in play. I definitely don't want to cast questing druid. Okay. Well, I still would be really, really thrilled to draw a red. Also, they led with Forest in their Dothy Voidwalker deck. They're not doing that if they have any black sources, which means they top deck that Scrubland look. Oh. Uh, I'm actually going to Ice still. Well, we'll see what they do. If they play, if they play Bowmasters, I'm just going to Mana Leak it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bowmasters does die to Fire Ice, but I don't have the red mana right now, and uh, I still need to find it. Let's hope they don't have a good play this turn. Grist this turn would be would be an issue, I shall say. Lotus Petal. Four, any four drop is going to be really hard to beat here. So far, keeping Firebolt over Forest has not worked out. But I still think that most of my wins out of this hand involve drawing a red. Oh, wow. Renegade Rally or back the Bowmaster. All right. I actually don't feel so bad about this keep now because I'm going to need all these burn spells. All right. Red Source. Let's go. Let's go. 18, I guess I pass. I don't even really want to cast Fire be or Ice because of Bowmasters. Yeah, I don't think the Forest would have been helping me that much. Let's just take it. And problem is, like, if I cast Ice, this becomes a 2-2, two -two, and then that makes my life so much harder. Raven Inspector, sure. I think I just need to hope Red's on the top, and then I can go... Mountain, I'm just going to cast Seek the Beast, try to hit another mountain, and then fire like Bowmasters plus Orc Token. They have good mana. They, their deck looks nice. All right. We're, we're done here. <laughs> it would have been a tapped red too. All right, well, didn't see anything that maybe changed my position on any of my stuff, I don't think, so let's get in there. All right, I would like to play first. All right, I have to keep this hand. Would actually be very happy to draw a Gruel Turf. Yes, dog, you having fun down there? But honestly, any third land, if I could draw a Mana Crypt next turn, then it's on. I haven't had any turn one Mana Crypts this, this uh, draft, he says in game three of the finals. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, this would have been a good time to... To deserve it. I've had a lot of turn opening hand breaches and no opening hand mana grips, I just want to say. Here's my ideal scenario. They go Swamp, Lotus Petal, Dothy, Voidwalker, and I get to Lightning Bolt it. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. But we'll see what they do. There's the Black Source. Yeah, I'm really hoping to... Cast Bolt on turn one or two, and then cast a spell on turn three. Because if I can get a Fable down, and Fable's amazing in this matchup, then I'll feel pretty good about the situation. I can discard the Spelunking probably, just get everything going, get enough resources for a Breach. Oh no, this is bad. This is bad. I was hoping for a Lotus Petal, not a Mox. Yep, there's my forest. All right, Mana Crypt. Mana Crypt or Bust, baby. Well, a land would also be okay. Oh, the luck has run out. Their deck was certainly better than mine. I do think, despite their deck having an overall higher quality than mine, I think my matchup here wasn't that bad. Like, I just have a lot of burn spells and they have a lot of small creatures, including I have, like, sweepers. Oh, they don't have a second land? Okay, we're, we're in it. Bolt this, draw a land. If I draw a land, I can abrade that Mox Diamond. Oh, four drop, come on. Ugh. That that was it. I, I think I could have won this game without playing a land on turn two. And now, of course, they draw their third land and the game just ends. Yeah. 
All right. Well, a pretty frustrating end. Both games two and three, I just didn't cast any spells. But, you know, we made the finals. Um, the deck wasn't that good, so making the finals was above expectation. I bet if we played that matchup a bunch, my deck was probably pretty good in it. Just Fiery Confluence is such a, a mirror breaker, as it were. But their deck was a better deck, for sure. It just, I think my matchup was actually good. Fire Ice also was pretty good against them. But it was not to be. I think had I drawn Mana Crypt or Lands in games two and three, I probably would have been fine. But I didn't. And we'll have to be settled with 30 treasure tests, uh, one of these things, 12 of these things, and 500 play points. Not bad. Hope you enjoyed watching the 64-player draft. These are a little harder to, to get into the schedule, but they're really fun when I do. And, uh, well, hope you enjoyed it. I sure did, even if the ending was a little bittersweet. Well, that'll do it for today. I will see you next time. There will be a new cute video up tomorrow. Don't go anywhere. Well, go somewhere else and then come back to watch it. Don't just sit here waiting. Uh, I appreciate everyone who watches these videos. It has really been a delight being able to make them. And viewers like you make that possible. All right, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll see you then. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.